In today's news, Unity Government will not continue after general election. Malone says Police Act will not be passed as is, urges dialogue. The BVI Tourist Board Director thanks Rodney Skelton for years of invaluable service. Young local creators encouraged to believe in their dreams and talents. Health Minister discusses grant system review with staff. These and more stories when Twit4 News return. There are many ways to enjoy life, like so many ways to count on popular. Every weekend at CCT Live, showing every game on CBS, NBC, ABC, and ESPN, including the Super Bowl. Sign up for CCT Live today. There's no game like this game. Well, welcome, viewers, to the Thursday, February 9th edition of Twit4 News. I am Kamal Haynes, bringing you the latest out of the British Virgin Islands. While well, leading today's news, the coalition national unity government will cease to exist after the House of Assembly has been dissolved to allow for the 2023 general election. Our Premier Dr. The Honorable Natalia Whitley gave the confirmation during his Virgin Islands Party Congress election last Sunday, stating that the unity government has served its intended purpose. But he said moving forward, his Virgin Islands party will be seeking a clear mandate from residents throughout the territory. Okay, the national unity government, this coalition, was something that was done um, to really avoid crisis. Uh, we came together as three parties, of course. Now we're seeking a, a clear mandate from the people of the Virgin Islands moving forward. What administration they want to take, not only the reforms forward, but the governance of the territory as we chart a course for the next 15, 20 years. Uh, that's what we're asking for the people of the Virgin Islands. Of course, the coalition has served its purpose in taking us to the elections. Of course, we've established some level of stability in the country, but we are seeking a clear mandate from the people. Well, Premier Wheatley, who was re-elected as chairman of his, his party, said he expects to continue to have the support of the opposition even after the election, once successful at the polls. We would expect, even with the Virgin Islands Party government, that we have the support of, of members of the opposition. You know, we would support that, and we expect that, that the whole House of Assembly would be working together um, towards the same goal. And you're absolutely right, Kathy. Uh, we respect the fact that, of course, we had a coalition with Honorable Marlon Penn, Honorable uh, Mitch Turnbull, as well as Honorable Mark Vanterpool, who are the three other members of the unity government. But of course, the Virgin Islands Party is presenting a whole team of persons who can be relied on to do what has to be done to protect the interests of the people of the Virgin Islands, including ensuring that our constitution is not suspended and included ensuring that we uh, respect the rule of law, we have transparency, accountability, good governance, and of course, we, uh, number one, we deliver progress for the people of the Virgin Islands. Well, Territory at Large Representative Carvin Malone has assured Virgin Islanders that the controversial Police Act 2023 will not be passed through the House of Assembly in its current form. Well, Malone spoke as a guest on the Morning Braff talk show. But while acknowledging deep concern within the population surrounding the sweeping changes outlined in the Act, Malone expressed confidence that legislators will consider these concerns and make the necessary amendments. At the end of the day, there are some specifics that uh, uh, that actually repeat themselves in the Commission of Inquiry, in the Police Act, and so forth. The Police Act, um, it was first 1986. It was revised in 2014, and uh, now it's been revised in 2023. There are some areas that the law enforcement has said, and I said this last night also. There are some areas the law enforcement has said that needs to be beefed up. 
But when you look at the sweeping changes and the many areas, there was a young lady on last night on the program that has a very keen understanding as to some of the challenges it has. I have received calls from officers. I've received calls from um, defense attorneys. I've received calls from citizens who are deeply concerned about the bill as it is. The premier, to his, to, his, um, to his credit, have said it will not pass in the form that it's in. Uh, that is because when it goes through the second and third reading and it goes to committee stage, based on the, based on the views that we'll continue to hear from the public, um, amendments could be made. Um, we will see whether or not, after the amendments are made, whether or not the governor will be minded to, uh, to actually assent to it. On the issue of the apparent rush to see the act through, Malone reserved comment. He said that he will leave, leave that issue for the premier to answer to. More excitement than this was when the public officers were invited to disclose all the assets, how many, how many socks their dogs wear, how many, how many, um, how many scarves for their cats. Um, the whole thing is that you know, everyone saw it as a, in, you know, as being intrusive. But so... this is part of the recommendations that came out from the Commission of Inquiry. So the fact is, is that the views are being heard. There is an informal meeting tomorrow with the House of Assembly members to discuss just this one particular bill that is coming forward. I invite everyone, not just to call me, but call whoever they reckon they have the ears to, all of the members of the House of Assembly, call them. Let them know uh, the concerns that they have, and, and um, it'll, it'll, it actually should be voiced. Well, while members of the public continue to share their discontent through various mediums, Malone is urging concerned residents to take their issues directly to the source. He believes that concerns need to be voiced directly to legislators. But despite recently crossing the floor to rejoin the government side of the House of Assembly, Malone says that his alignment will not interfere with his decision to vote for or against the bill as he sees fit. As you see from the last nine months, I have no problem standing alone for what I feel is right. You know, um, you know, you know, I'm the I'm the one who always take all the blows for doing what I do, and then people come and then when they find out that what I said was a correct stance, no one ever come back to me and say, "Well, look, you took the right stance." You know, I stand alone on many occasions. I have no problem standing alone for what is right. Ronnie Skelton, who served as Deputy Director of Tourism at the BVI Tourist Board and Film Commission for the past five and a half years, has moved on to the next phase of his career. When Mr. Skelton, a 19-year veteran of the BVI Tourist Board, was appointed as the Deputy Director in May 2017, after previously serving as Film Commissioner and Events Marketing Manager. The Chairman of the Board, Mrs. Delma Maduro, and Director of Tourism, Mr. Clive McCoy, thanked Mr. Skelton for his many years of invaluable service to the Board and the Territory in the various capacities in which he served and wished him success in the next chapter of his professional journey. But content producer Kyra James is encouraging young Virgin Islanders to believe in themselves and their talents as anything is possible once an individual has the right mindset. But Kyra's encouraging words came during a recent interview with 284 Media, where she spoke about her experience and involvement in the just concluded 65th Grammy Awards. While working for the Academy, Kyra had the opportunity to interact with music musicians, producers, recording engineers, and other musical professionals. She said a career in media was not her initial professional goals, but spoke on how she discovered her love for media and producing content. When I graduated high school, I wanted to become a nurse practitioner or something. I don't know if you remember. Uh, for job training, I spent summers like at the hospital or at Bougainvillea working surgeries. And then when I went to college, I started off as a biology major. And it was during that time where I realized that I, 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 did, I wasn't fulfilling my purpose, but I didn't know what it was. 
I mean, so I was at the University of the Virgin Islands feeling very stuck, feeling very lost, which prompted me to do a lot of my own research into the degree offerings at the university. And when I saw communication, I was like, what's that? And when I did all this research on what you can do with this degree, I realized that a lot of it was very aligned with the things that I do all the time. I was at college uh, coming up with these crazy video ideas, forcing my friends to make my concepts come to life. I spent my summers learning how to use iMovie, begging my mom to buy me new equipment. And so it was inside of me this whole time. I was literally doing it. But without that education, there was no way for me to put the two together. Well, Kyra also spoke about the risk she took by gambling on herself and believing in her ability, which eventually landed her in the role of content producer at the Recording Academy. LinkedIn was how I got that job. I get that question a lot, like, how do you begin these cool opportunities? And how were you able to work with this person and that person? And I try to encourage people to see themselves as being very capable um, I got my start just creating on my own, which helped me learn a lot on like in action, right? And so my biggest piece of advice is always, while you wait for a company to hire you, do what you can on your own, do what you can with your friends. And so that was really my foundation. And I was able to use that as proof of concept to the role that I had before this um, and another media company, which ultimately gave me the experience that I needed to make a good impression on the Recording Academy team. And so just like anybody else, I saw an opening and put in a solid application, gave my best interview and was offered the job. She hopes that aspiring creatives use her for motivation and inspiration in believing that one day they too can achieve their respective career goals. And so I really hope that young Virgin Islanders can see me and see that even if these career paths aren't being talked about in um, schools, that, hey, she from here and look at what she's doing. I could probably do that too. And so I just hope that as I continue on this path, that I can do that for the generations behind me. Well, up next, Health Minister discusses grant system review with staff. Fabuloso products recall for bacterial growth risk and health personnel benefit from respiratory training. Well, these are more stories after a word from our sponsors. Is someone gonna get that? Hello. Hello. I, I, so nice of you to have clean up for us. Hi, baby. Hi. We're like in-laws that don't show up unannounced. Don't worry. I've got this. CG Insurance. Good like that. Catch Super Bowl 57 on CCT Live. Sign up today by calling 444-4444. Whoa. Mm. Is that my lunch? Hmm? Is that my lunch? Mm-mm. We're like the co-worker that doesn't eat your lunch. I'm John. I'm John. CG Insurance. Good like that. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Hun, it's asking for your password. Huh? You were logged out. I need the password. Uh, uh, B-R...
What's the rest? Um, B R A N D I, the number four, E D E R. Who's Brandy? We're like the password that isn't your ex girlfriend's name. C G Insurance. Good like that. I should have changed it. You should have. You're, you're right. Well, welcome back, viewers. Well, Minister for Health and Social Development Honorable Marlon A. Penn met with the staff of the Social Development Department to discuss the department's future in light of the Social Assistance and Grant System Review. For more on this report. Honorable Penn commended the staff for its work over the past six years, highlighting that the hurricanes in 2017 and the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic have displaced many residents and created difficulty in transitioning to normalcy. The minister further emphasized that the Commission of Inquiry has impacted how assistance is given to residents to offset the consequences of certain social issues. Honorable Penn said, and I quote, the burden is now placed on the Social Development Department to process all of these levels of assistance without additional staff or resources. So I understand the struggle that you face when people are frustrated and they sometimes take the frustration out on you. But I just want to let you know that you have my support. Honorable Penn addressed staffing issues, stating that he has met with the permanent secretary and discussed support for the staff to be better able to offer the increase in service to the public because of the shift in terms of reform the ministry's undertaking for social systems within the territory. Honorable Penn said, and I quote, We have just completed the initial report in terms of how we reform the social systems, the social network, and we are also about to take that to cabinet with those recommendations. Those reforms have implications and will impact how you do your work and it is important for you to be a part of this process so there are no surprises and that you are equipped to offer those services to the public when they come calling. The Minister for Health expressed his gratitude in meeting with the people behind the services offered by the Social Development Department. He also encouraged the staff to continue providing excellent service and reiterated his commitment to support the team as they continue to provide quality service to the population. Well, consumers are being urged to check their cleaning supplies, specific, specifically sorry, those from the Fabuloso brand amid a recall from the company. According to the company, nearly 5 million bottles of Fabuloso multipurpose cleaner have been identified as at risk for bacterial growth. But this, the statement revealed, was a result of insufficient levels of preservatives being added to the products during manufacturing. What well, the result, growth of a pseudomonas, a species of bacteria, the kind typically found in soil and water, where this bacteria can enter the body through the eyes, skin, and respiratory system and threatens complications, putting people with weakened immune systems and underlying lung conditions most at risk. Well, effective products include Fabuloso brand original multi-purpose cleaner, professional all-purpose cleaner, and degreaser and multi-purpose cleaner bleach alternative. For well, the affected batch of products bear manufacturing dates between December 14, 2022 and January 23, 2023. For the first eight digits of the code for the recalled products are 2348US78 through 2365US78 and 3001US78 through 3023US78. For anyone in possession of these products are being urged to immediately stop using them and contact the company for a refund at fabuloso.com forward slash recall. And moving on viewers where nine persons are now trained as fit testers as part of a respiratory protection program for healthcare workers. For more in this story. Chief Nursing Officer Ms. Jacint Hannibal said fit testing is one part of the comprehensive respiratory protection program geared towards managing respiratory hazards in healthcare facilities for the benefit of healthcare workers and patients. Ms. Hannibal said healthcare workers are exposed to many hazards daily, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, chemicals, hazards, and radiation that cause injuries and ill health to themselves and their patients. According to the Chief Nursing Officer, when these hazards are respiratory in in nature, healthcare workers must use controls such as respirators to reduce or eliminate the transmission of disease. Ms. Hannibal further stated that air purifying respirators such as the N95 mask are a main type of control use. These masks help to protect the respiratory system of healthcare workers as they care for patients. She added, sometimes these masks are not the right fit for the particular healthcare worker which leads to gaps in their protection and exposes the worker to infection. Ms. Hannibal further explained that the 
training equipped persons within the health services with the skills to fit test workers as fit testing helps to ensure that the mask they are wearing is providing them with the best possible protection. Representatives from the Ministry of Health and Social Development and the BVI Health Services Authority attended the training facilitated by infection prevention and control specialist in the UK, Ms. Janice Topolis. Well, up next, CIBC First Caribbean named Best Digital Transformation by 2022, an Antigua opposition calling for COI are made of human trafficking concerns. But these stories went to it for news return. Yeah. Father Jesus, that line you long like church souls. Hmm. Alright, let me enjoy the rest of it then. Next customer in line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come, yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must stop cut from the people. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, forget that. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. You want a top of Eh? You want a top of Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn-Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top-up is sold and top-up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top-up or what? Catch Super Bowl 57 on CCT Live. Sign up today by calling Choose your mix, choose your flavor. Welcome back, viewers, and thank you so much for sticking with us. Well, CIBC First Caribbean has copped another prestigious award for the great strides the regional bank has made in the digital banking space. For more in this report. CIBC First Caribbean has copped another prestigious award for the great strides the regional bank has made in the digital banking space. In naming the bank Best Digital Transformation Bank 2022, the European, the London-based global financial publication, said the decision was based on the bank's efforts and strides made in digital banking, e-products, internet banking services, and the corporate banking products, and made based on a set of global standards as well as the opinion of a select panel of reputable and Analyst. In addition, that CIBC First Caribbean has rendered the latest digital banking solutions allowing customers to perform their banking transactions seamlessly and securely, meaning that people can do their banking where, when, and how they want. It also ensures that they give customers new ways to better understand their finances and data in such a way that adds value to their lives. The bank's executive director, retail and business banking, Deepa Bukhard, expressed delight at the latest award, noting that it was a testimony to the hard work and commitment to client excellence on a bank-wide level. She said the bank was committed to its digital transformation journey, ensuring that clients have their fingertips all of the products and services to make their banking personalized and easy. We continue, she said, to lead the way with modern, innovative products and services that simplifies the everyday banking experience of our clients by providing them with new digital capabilities across all our services delivering channels. Digital is the future of banking and we are continuously enhancing our digital channels to provide innovative solutions to meet your unique and changing banking needs. Well, moving on to our final story, viewers, where Antigua and Barbados political opposition has called for a commission of inquiry to be undertaken in the Twin Island state. The purpose? To determine whether local authorities are engaged in human trafficking. But the call came shortly after the United Progress Progressive Party and its supporters staged a protest against a decision by the Gaston Brown-led cabinet to seek a legal status for hundreds of African migrants who wish to stay in the country. But the migrants in question reportedly traveled to Antigua and Barbuda in 2022 
and are asked to be seeking asylum from the war-torn West African country of Cameroon. Well, opposition leader Jamali Pringle told the press that the proceedings have, and I quote, some semblance of human trafficking, end quote. To this end, he said that the UPP is, and I quote, asking the government to come clean on this matter, end quote. I believe that the two inspire confidence in the minds of Antiguans and Barbudans that this situation is legitimate. There must be a public inquiry. Well, last week, the government of Antigua and Barbuda said that it had examined the circumstances surrounding the Antigua Airways flights, which carried its migrants over. Well, according to official word on that, the flights were meant to be carrying well-off citizens of Nigeria and neighboring countries who wished to visit the Caribbean as tourists. Well, the Caribbean uh, cabinet statement revealed that the visitors who have remained in Antigua are currently living in small hotels and guest houses across the island. But while the statement indicated that an offer was made to return them to their country, it also noted that many were likely to choose to stay. But that is why the statement added that arrangements were made to ensure their legal status. The UPP has criticized the decision stating that in addition to human trafficking concerns, allowing the migrants to remain in Antigua posed national security concerns and threatened to implicate the labor market. Well, viewers, but that's it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com and like us on Facebook at 284BVI. That, sorry, that's 284media and 284BVI on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Kamal Haynes and I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye-bye. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question. It would read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What are you really? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home. Keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into, well, you know I huff. I watch him ball. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Introducing a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. It doesn't always involve suits and bow ties, but raw, real life lessons. I'm taking you outside in the field to share the journey of some of the BBI's the best and brightest men. From East End to West End, Virgin Guara to Joss Van Dyke, not forgetting Anigara. Our Virgin Islands gentlemen are doing the damn thing. We are the movers and shakers of this generation. The art of a distinguished gentleman. Season 4 by yours truly, Ron Grant. Raising a generation of greatness. Wednesdays at 8 p.m. on 284 Media. Every weekend with CCT Live, showing every game on CBS, NBC, ABC, and ESPN, including the Super Bowl. Sign up for CCT Live today. There's no game like this game! Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local.